I often say to my European friends when we go on holiday and look at the ruins of cities in the Mediterranean, they didn't become ruins by accident, they became ruins by neglect. We know the solutions we've had in the past were good for them, but they're not good for the future. The only way we move forward is when we learn. So creating cultures that enable that and that value that are central. I think the most important thing uh, is to recognise that we have people with innovative capability, but somehow the system, the regulation, the focus on compliance has kind of kept a lid on some of that creativity. So I think the number one thing I can do is encourage people that the lids are being taken off. There's also the issue of extracting from wastewater the material that we can then use as energy supplies. So water suddenly becomes a, a carrier of material that we can use in energy, and that's mixing up the water industry and the energy industry in a way which hasn't happened before, and that's a real innovation. Well, we've got some partner utilities with us. So we've got Sydney Water, we've got Midcoast Water, and we've got Watercare from New Zealand. And then we've got four universities present. So the University of Auckland, UCL from London, UTS from Sydney, and of course the University of Newcastle and in particular we've got Professor Brian Collins and Professor Cynthia Mitchell. Uh, they're the two sort of internationally renowned thought leaders in the field of infrastructure who we're learning from today. I think the water industry will become less isolated from the other utilities with which it has very deep interdependency, telecommunications and energy being the two big ones. So what if instead we use what we're starting to learn in uh, microbial ecology and we, and we start with a different bunch of of bacteria involved who can um, actually produce a viable product out of what we now call a waste stream. The way in which sustainability is likely to be achieved will be by thinking outside the square, the thinking of ways in which the same kind of uh, service provision can occur using less carbon, less waste. There are quite a few examples, particularly in the asset space, um, of where we're doing projects with, with research groups and we're really implementing the outcomes into our utilities and we're also embedding researchers into the business so that we're building capability and we're building skills. One of the things about being in an organisation is you get caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff and where you want to be and it's good to have somebody outside going, hey, look what you've done or hey, have you thought about this doing this a different way? Are we able to um, better influence and demonstrate changes in the way we operate our business and call it a, a smaller pilot scale. Well, this is part of the connectivity between infrastructure providers, researchers, academics and people in other research fields. Unless you broaden your horizon and uh, have um, a bit of an overview of exactly what's happening elsewhere, and you can't basically then have an outward view of the organisation itself. We need to uh, encourage people in their daily jobs to be curious, um, to be able to ask different kinds of questions and to be brave enough to explore different kinds of, of responses to the same questions that we've, that we've been asking for some time.